Hey guys, so I just finished watching Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on 4K HDR. This is the last one brought to us by director Chris Columbus, starring Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter, Rupert Grint as Ron Weasley, and Emma Watson as Hermione Granger. Richard Harris also returns as Dumbledore, but unfortunately this is his last time as the Great Wizard as Richard Harris unfortunately passes away just a few weeks after filming finished. And in this one we're also introduced to some new characters, Dobby the House Elf, voiced by Toby Jones, Mark Williams as Mr. Weasley, Jason Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy, Kenneth Branagh as Gilderoy Lockhart, Miriam Margolis as Professor Sprout, Hugh Mitchell as Colin Creevy, and Shirley Henderson as Moaning Myrtle. Now this one is actually a, a darker film, tonally, than the previous one. We're going a little bit darker, a little bit more edgy, a little bit more scary. Uh, still very kidified in the Harry Potter universe. The first couple films are, through Chris Columbus's eye, more child-friendly. Um, the books they're based on also from J.K. Rowling are a little bit more kiddie-friendly. Um, J.K. Rowling's book series are actually designed to grow with the reader. So yeah, they do start out for very young readers in mind, but they grow darker and they get more mature as each book is released. Fantastic way to grow with your audience. And the movies are also designed in the same way. So for me, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets are two of the more kid-friendly versions in the whole series. Moving on to The Prisoner of Azkaban, the next movie in the series, we do take a more darker and more mature tone. So Harry Potter has been warned off by Dobby, the house elf, not to go to Hogwarts as he fears for Harry's life. But that's not going to stop Harry. It's not going to stop the Weasleys either from breaking him out of the Dursleys' house with their flying blue Ford Anglia. So Harry Potter gets back to Hogwarts and it's not long before he's back on Draco Malfoy's radar. And strange things are happening pretty much right away with a creature running around the school and petrifying students. Like, literally in statues, they're just frozen. So it turns out that something is awakening this creature, which his sole purpose is to kill mudbloods, who are essentially wizards and witches born of muggle parentage. So, of course, it's up to our trio, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, to solve the crime and find out who is the perpetrator and why is somebody trying to kill the students and eventually Harry Potter. Now this one is also the longest in the series at a solid two hours and 40 minutes. It is a long one, but it goes briskly enough. I really enjoyed the pacing in this film. Um, the look, once again, is beautifully realized. Although I did find that in this 4K HDR um, version of the film, there was a bit of grain in this one, which is kind of weird because the Philosopher's Stone, or Sorcerer's Stone to you Americans out there, it was crystal clear there was very little to no grain at all. So I was a little bit perplexed as to why the next one in the series, a later one that was produced, did. So there's that. It doesn't affect the film too badly. Like I said, the HDR is where the film shines. It's still really beautifully presented. The deep dark blacks still make a nice contrast with all the colors. So it still looks fantastic. It's the best it's ever looked, but not perfect which is a real shame because I love these movies and I was hoping that each one of them would be progressively better as the production values of each film is steadily increased. And Kenneth Branagh as Gilderoy Lockhart just steals the show. He plays a, such a flamboyant, over-the-top character. You can't help but have a lot of fun with him. And Jason Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy really does bring quite a lot of menace to the role and he's pretty much going to be one of the main players for the rest of the series. So what he's created with his representation of Lucius Malfoy is just magnificent. He kind of plays it up really well and he's just terrifically awful. The underlying threat of the whole series, and I'm not spoiling anything here, is Voldemort. So I'm not giving anything away, but Voldemort is kind of creeping around the edges of this film. Um, like I said in my previous video, if you've not seen these movies, do yourself a favour and check them out. And once again, if you have seen them, revisit. They're, they're just so good. The scenes of Hogwarts itself are absolutely outstanding in this. The big overhead shots of the castle, mostly at night. Uh, the light shining, it's just, in HDR, just absolutely looks stunning. So I'm so glad that 
they've taken the time to give these movies the treatment they deserve. Yeah, it's got a little bit of grain, but still really, really pretty to look at. So there you go, guys. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It is worth the double dip if you want to pick it up on 4K. I know these movies are available individually, so you don't need to lash out to nearly, you know, 200 bucks to buy the box set. You can get them um, and enjoy them all over again. The movie does look beautiful. It's uh, fantastic performances from the lead crew, as usual. They are getting better and better as each film goes on, so it's also really interesting to see the progr their, their progression as actors and performers. And just to see them grow in front of the camera is just quite a unique experience. So there you have it guys, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, year two, fantastic fun. Thank you once again for checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe, throw me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.